If you correspond with Ralph on television, video, or telephone, audio, or you chat, text, or email him, you're giving him permission to duplicate it, rebroadcast it on any of the Take Your Life Back Today show broadcasts. Yeah, beat your addiction, live free Ralph Freed Ricks is who you see Listen in when you're feeling low Take back your life, today show Beat your addiction, live free Ralph Freed Ricks is who you see Listen in when you're feeling low Take back your life, today show Stay positive, hope, and keep faith Stand strong against any odds that you face Put away the alcohol and the drugs Fill your time with the things you love Addiction is tough but it's worth the work Treat your body what it's worth Spread positivity, inspire all If we stand together we will never fall I help others see the other sides of life A soul of life, letting go of the strife So give me a call, I can help 1-844-405 HELP Homeless shelters, hospitals, jails, wherever you are I am Ralph Friedrichs and I am here for you 1-844-405 HELP Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share something with you. Let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin. You tried lifting a lid, but the enormous weight upon the lid prevents you from opening it. You try banging on the lid to unsettle the dirt. Maybe somebody might notice and start digging their way down towards you. This is what it's like to feel at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help, you know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn. In reality, there are people standing by your grave. You just don't know that. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, uh, people that are abusing drugs and alcohol uh, have a great ability to repress the fear of death. With this, let me leave this thought with you. Don't be like the person that went to their grave and didn't seek help and took something away that God had given them called life. Not just from themselves, but from the people that love and care for them the, for them most. Mother, father, brother, sister, husband, wife, children, and even your grandchildren. Give me a call at 844-405. Help, and I promise you, I will help you take your life back. I want to talk about 10 tips for handling change in a workplace. And the reason I want to talk about this is because at one, one of my jobs, there has been a change in management. And prior to this happening... There were folks that were talking, oh, well, I wonder what the new person's going to be like, blah, blah, blah. And whoever this person is, remember that the team that runs the workplace can very easily adapt to any changes. And the changes are never going to be so severe that you can't. One of the attributes, let me fix this up here. One of the attributes all employees need to have is being able to adapt to change 
in this current economy, everyone, and I mean everyone, is moving around from one company or group to the next. We've accepted that employees don't stay in a role for life, and one of the challenges that come with that is to handle new situations that you haven't handled before. In order to better handle the change in the workplace, here are the 10 tips that I came up with. And number one is to always, and I mean always, remain positive. You always have to be optimistic and maintain a good attitude regardless of what the new person uh, uh, brings along. In other words, you might have heard that this new, per new, new person is strict or uh, just has uh, 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 things that you're not agreeing with. Come to terms that your new situation might not be perfect, but your previous situation probably wasn't either. Remember that now. Think about how you can best leverage your skills, attitude, uh, and uh, bring your best game each and every day to your possibly new manager and to your existing co-workers. And remember, number two, that a recognize the change is constant. People have several careers and jobs in their lifetime, and their companies are constantly moving employees around from group to group, store to store, uh, headquarters to headquarters. You will have change happen to you whether you like it or not. You must accept that reality. The good thing about change is that it prevents you from getting bored in your current role and challenges you to work on projects that you maybe never have worked before. Number three is you need to stay connected. Stay connected to previous co-workers. Never forget about the people you've already had the chance to work with because they could become extremely beneficial to you down the road. If they are staying with you uh, or, or, or they are staying at your present uh, job uh, but then are transferred, you need to stay connected with them. They could also become your lifeline back to your previous situation and maybe with your new climate there and you can call them, uh, text them or even chat with them and say listen here's my situation. Maybe they can give you some advice. Number four is communicate with others to learn your new role. After you get moved into a new role you should quickly find that all stakeholders that you rely on and connect with them immediately. Find those who have already been in your role and get them to teach you everything that they know to make your new role so much easier. Become good at asking questions because the more you know, the better equipped you will be in this new role and easier life will be. If you wait too long to reach out to them, your performance will be uh, start lacking and people, I promise you, will start noticing. Number five, be optimistic even though you might not be currently happy. Regardless if you like your new role or not, you need to make the best of it. Who knows what a year from now your new role looks like. Think about the tasks you like in your current role and how to best strengthen your abilities and increase your performance. Number six is self-reflect, and I mean self-reflect constantly. Take some time to relax and think about how you've already accomplished all the new things that were asked of you and what your, goal, your new goals have been uh, met right now. Think about what skills you need to acquire to, to adapt to this new role. You need to meet and assess your entire situation daily. Talk about your new role so that they realize what you're looking to get out of your new role and set expectations, deliverables, higher goals in your new position. Learn new skills is number seven. You naturally are forced to learn new skills on every type of work that you have to do at your job. Every new role comes with new responsibilities, which comes with new skills. Make a list of the skills that are required of you in your new role and invest time each week to develop those skills. For each skill, give yourself a deadline to master so that you can become quickly an expert and increase your value. One skill many employees today are learning is how to improve processes and build businesses application using quick base. If manual processes are slowing you down, go and Google quick base and get it to speed things up. Number eight, overcome, <clears throat> excuse me, over communicate. Whether you're working from an office or working from a remote off, uh, office, uh, you should constantly be in touch with your new colleagues. They need to know that you are responsible, that you're getting the work done right now, today. When, you, uh, when you're emailing them or are meeting uh, them somewhere, make sure you clarify what you say and do 
exactly what you say and follow through constantly. Number nine is ask as many questions as possible. You can never ask too many questions. People always say, I have a dumb question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Are there no bad questions unless you are asking something that has already been asked and answered? Come up with a list of uh, questions and you will receive the answers. Write them down. This way, you can show people that you're paying attention to what they have to say. Asking questions will help further develop your new role in this position. Number 10, look for ways to help others cope with the change. One of the best ways to deal with your new position is to help others get situated while you're trying uh, to, uh, to get a situated yourself. Remember, by doing this, you will feel more comfortable because you realize that others are going, what others are going through, and you know how to deal with that. Uh, also, try to constantly, constantly re-educate yourself with uh, other items that are outside the scope of your job. Re-educate yourself on today's political arena and geographic areas in the country so that when you're helping in that shipping department, you know exactly where uh, Bismarck, North Dakota is, uh, where Naples, Florida is. Educate yourself. Adapt to the new role. If you have a new manager, give that manager a chance to show that they are looking at not only for the company's interest but for your interests as well and then you all have a great day and God bless you So
just remember 